Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a couple of grad cards. I started off with my, what will be my card front panels and I had a rough idea in my head. And so what I did was I just kind of laid out some of the coordinating dies, the letter dies and some of the stars that I'm going to use to create my layouts for my cards. And once I was kind of happy with that, I'm just going to set all of that aside and I'm going to use the main images from Honeybee's cap and gown stamp set. So I have some Canson XL watercolor paper and I just put it in my Misty, put the stamps down that I wanted to use and then I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool, brush off the excess and then I'm inking up the stamps with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink and I'm going to stamp them a couple times to make sure I got everything good and stamped. You could watercolor just like this. You don't need to heat emboss when you use Versafine Claire inks because um, they're water resistant, but I like to heat emboss. It gives me that little bit of raised edge, which just means that I, <laughs> I don't have to be as careful when I'm watercoloring, really. That's all it is. Um, I don't have to worry so much about, you know, areas running into each other, things like that. Plus, um, Versafine Claire ink, same with the regular Versafine ink, etc. Because it's a slower drying ink. Um, it needs some time to dry or you could heat set it. And I'm also very bad at smearing things. So I heat emboss. So that's what I did. I just heat embossed the images with WOW's clear matte dull embossing powder. You could use regular clear, whatever floats your boat. And then for the watercoloring, I'm using Distress Ink Reinkers. I've just been playing with these a lot lately. You could use regular watercolors, watercolor markers, anything like that. It, any of it's going to work. But I chose my Distress Reinkers and I have, I'll have links to the specific colors, but it was Tattered Rose, Gathered Twigs, Ground Espresso, Wild Honey, and Black Soot. And I put tiny little dabs on this plastic palette, more than I will need for these images. And then I quickly just had a scrap of watercolor paper and was just kind of mixing a couple of colors because I'm doing skin tones, although I call this easy skin tones because all you're painting is their arms basically and like the one, um, the back of his, you know, neck and ears. Um, so it's not facial features, so I'm not like feeling intimidated <laughs> because sometimes skin tones and like getting facial features without making things look weird. I don't know. I, I, I generally avoid doing those. That's why I like florals. But anywho, I mixed up the colors just to see where I was going and I was happy with it. So for the first one, I used Gathered Twigs with the teeniest bit of Tattered Rose for the skin tone. And then for the hair, it was a mixture of Ground Espresso and Black Soot just to get it like darker. And then um, once I got that one painted for the other skin tone, it was more Tattered Rose with the teeniest bit of Gathered Twigs. And then for the hair, I did a little bit of the Wild Honey and then added more Gathered Twigs. So this is again, one of these types of images where you can definitely, you know, customize it for the recipient, etc. Or you could just stamp and heat emboss it like onto white cardstock. These images have enough detail that you don't even need to color them in my opinion. You know, it's, it's whatever works. Same with the gown, like the gowns, you could do them, you know, school colors, all that sort of thing. I just went with black. That's also why I chose to use Distress Rankers because black soot is such a deep, tr what I call a true black. Like when you add water to it, it doesn't um, turn into like a purple or any other weird colors. Like it is, it's just a true black. And that's what I love because there's nothing worse than going to paint with something that you think is black and then you start adding water and it starts turning, you know, purple or blue or whatever weird color. So again, I kept this simple. I just painted them black, just using my regular little paintbrush, adding some water. When you're working with Distress Reinkers, make sure you're adding water because if you're not using enough water, these reinkers, they're not meant for watercolor in that sense. They're meant to reink your ink pads. So if there's not enough water added, you're just adding like straight up reinker to your watercolor paper. And because of like the glycerins and resins and whatever, you know, all is in them that are meant to not dry out an ink pad, you might find, if you find that, you know, you paint something with a Distress Reinker and you find that it doesn't seem to be fully dry, like even way later, there wasn't enough water added. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so anywho, these were easy to paint. Once they were dry, 
I use the coordinating Honeycuts dies and I tape them into place with some of my just Spellbinders tape so that the wafer dies don't move, you know, shift anywhere when I run this through my die cut machine. So I used all the coordinating wafer dies, taped them into place, and then I'll run these through my die cut machine. And then off camera, I also die cut a whole bunch of letters. I used the Be Bold Alphabet Honeycuts. This is the uppercase one. And I die cut G-R-A-D from black cardstock as well as from some silver glitter paper. And I stacked two layers of the black cardstock together to give it a little bit of dimension. And then I topped it with the silver glitter paper die cut. So I've got that fabulous silver glitter. I don't use silver very often. I don't know why I feel the need to make a note of this. <laughs> but every time I make a grad card, I always go with black and silver. I think it's just the easiest like neutral. You know, you could, totally, you could totally do gold too. I almost did, but I was like, I haven't used silver probably since the last time I made a grad card. You know, gold would look fabulous. And again, school colors, those sorts of things, like you can just customize it to the nines. But anywho, I layered all those letters together, did that twice for each of the cards. I also die cut a whole bunch of stars from some silver glitter paper, from some silver foil paper, the black cardstock. Have that all just all over my desk. And then for the sentiments, these are for also from the cap and gown stamp set and I just stamped them onto some black cardstock with clear embossing ink and then I'm using silver embossing powder. I almost used white because that's just my go-to. White heat embossing on black cardstock looks fabulous but so I'm using silver this time and there's something about the silver like it when the light isn't hitting it you almost can't see it very well but then the minute the light hits it and you get that reflection with the silver metallic it's like ooh, this looks really nice. <laughs> So I heat emboss the sentiments and then I use the coordinating wafer dies for those as well. This is something I rave about all the time. Honeybee and their coordinating wafer dies for all the sentiments just makes me happy because I really, I like, like, especially like the shape, you know, all around the congrats, etc. And I'm not going to fussy cut that. I, I mean, I'm not good at that. It's one thing to fussy cut something. It's another thing to just eyeball and fussy cut. And anyway, die cut the sentiments. And then I just started assembling my card fronts. So the one on the right, nothing's adhered. Obviously everything's kind of a mess, but I laid it all out roughly how I wanted it. And then I just followed that on the card front on the left. And these are going to be five by seven cards, which I don't normally do, but Honeybee makes a lot of like larger images and larger dies and things like that, that just lend so nicely to five by seven. And it just gave me, you know, extra room. I was like, Ooh, I can put more stars on these. <laughs> So these card fronts right now are slightly smaller than five by seven. They're roughly like, I think four and three quarters by six and three quarters, something like that. So I just started adhering the elements. Um, the individual letters were super easy to adhere. If these were more like finicky letters or more letters than just the four, I would have used, you know, a ruler, made sure they were straight, but these were just super simple to just work with the, I just put the D down first and then just work my way back and it was good to go. So adhered things with honeybees liquid glue as well as some thin 3D foam squares and then repeated that with the other card front. And then for my card bases, I've got some light gray cardstock that I had cut down to 10 inches by seven inches and I'm scoring it at five inches. So that will be a side folding five by seven card. Did that twice. So I've got both card bases here out of this light gray cardstock. Once these are scored, I am going to adhere the second sentiment onto the insides of the cards, as well as all the extra stars I had from die cutting the silver glitter paper, silver foil paper, the black. This is one of those things too, where you could, if you wanted to like die cut just a ton of little stars, kind of like confetti. Cause that would be really cute, you know, open the card and some little confetti falls out, like not a ton, but you know, a few. And at least confetti is easy. I wouldn't put glitter in a card. That's just mean. <laughs> you put loose glitter in, you know, something you want to send to someone that just, you're not a fan of. But anywho, that's a whole other, that's a whole other genre of card making. Anyway, anyway, I adhered those stars to the inside with the sentiments. And then I decided to pop up these card fronts with foam tape just to give it that nice bit of dimension. 
And in the process of adhering that, I don't know, I had, I had black ink or something. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. It's hard to tell from my editing end, but I got some black smudges on the card fronts, which not fun, you know, after I've adhered everything, but to fix it, I've said this many times in my videos, just glue something over it. Glue on an embellishment. In this case, I was gluing stars over because I actually had a few smudges. <laughs> so I just die cut a few more stars and I adhered them on top and then we're, we're good to go. So that, you know, covered up all my oopsies because I was not going to redo, you know, the entire card. And then since I adhered extras to that one that I got the smudges on, I just adhered a couple extras to this one that didn't have smudges as far as I was aware of. So got those adhered into place. And then once all that was done, the adhesives dried, I flipped over these card fronts and just trimmed off um, any of the pieces of the stars, etc., that are kind of hanging over the edges with scissors and that finished these off. So they're all silver and glittery and shiny and shimmery, just fun and really easy to make. So as always, there will be a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have links to all of the supplies used. All that info will be in the, de in the description box directly below the video if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing, thumbs up and commenting, all of it. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye.